in this uh, week's uh, Newsweek, there's an interview. Um, oh, here's a chair up here. She's bringing one. Thank you. There's an interview with Dr. Stephen Cho, who is the uh, current Secretary of Energy, and he indicated that the situation with energy in the United States, he used the analogy with the Titanic. And in my talk a little later, I have a similar analogy which is comparable. Energy change, big energy changes are coming, and these will not be without pain. And so I've made a scale of pain. Over on the left side is where it can be just another problem, unnecessary changes. Over on the right side is economic chaos. And that may sound a little alarmist, but I think it's an entirely a reasonable outcome. And then on the left, it tells what needs to be done, mainly recognize the seriousness. And on the right, uh, there are such things as disinterested citizens and fail to recognize it really is serious and to blame someone else. And I think if there's enough interest, I can just leave a disk and then Michelle can run off copies if people are interested in the content. So the energy situation is like a waterfall. We're on a quiet river now, but lurking downstream is sudden disaster. Mm -hmm. And that's my analogy to the analogy of the Titanic. If we look at some time scales relative to energy and across the top is the United States voter uh, for 40 years. And then down below, the time to transition to alternate fuels will be likely to two decades, 20 years. And then you look to see how long a senator's around, the president's around House. And so in that 20 years, we may have, let's see, five divided, no, four divided into 20 is five. We may have five different presidents. And so <coughs> the thrust of this is it's the voter that's going to be around. Mm -hmm. And plotted here is uh, time, and then millions of barrels of oil a day, and there is a production curve there. And it does have a peak, and this would be global, that is the whole world, Saudi Arabia, Russia, United States, and that's kind of a speculative, 2025, 27, 2070, alternate fuels will be very dominant. But this peak is critical. And here shows the uh, demand, and then that can be lowered. Like if you buy a hybrid automobile, it's more efficient, so it takes less fuel. And right in this area will be a time when it's absolutely essential to have the alternate fuels. Otherwise, there will be a big economic um, consequence. There's another way to look at it, and up at the top is a trillion dollars. That's kind of the estimate of how much it'll cost to make a transition to alternate fuels. And several months ago, a trillion dollars with all those zeros looked like a lot of money. <laughs> but with the way Congress is tossing money around today, then it's not as impressive as it once was. But as they say in Congress, a trillion here, a trillion there, and pretty soon it adds up to big money. <laughs> Along the bottom, we have the years to go to peaking, and then this would be the annual funding to achieve this alternate fuels that we are seeking. Now, if you have 20 years, now it's a modest 50 billion per year. If uh, what's not shown here is the fact that with 20 years, you also have time to make mistakes. And assuredly, there will be mistakes made in which horse to back. If you wait over here until you got two or five years, then you're going to be in a panic mode. You're going to spend big money. You're going to pick a racehorse, which may not or may not come in with the results that you want. And I love that analogy so much that I just have to show it again. So this is a ship of state, five mm -hmm. years remaining to plan and, and do something. 
and you're almost in disaster. This is a cover of a Society of Automotive Engineers book that I've been studying. And how do you determine what fuel is reasonable to put, invest in as an alternate fuel? And you need to start with a feedstock, go through all the steps to finally deliver it to the vehicle. And for an example, suppose that we think about a fuel cell car in which the vehicle would be using, of course, a fuel cell with hydrogen. And up at the top, the, the feed stock could be uh, water and electrolysis, or it could be methane, which is kind of the usual. And then you would need to know how to, re how to process your feed stock, how you're going to store it, and all of these intermediate steps are essential to understand. And for example, ethanol cannot be sent by pipeline, and so it has to be sent by a railroad tank car in large quantities. The engine of the automobile or the whole automobile may need to be changed. I will stop here for a minute.